So we'll cover up, cover them up today. What are the various ways of storing information on the device? So if you all remember, right? So the Android storage comes up in four segments. One is the internal storage. Then the other one is the external storage. Then we have the shared preferences. And finally, we have the SQLite databases. So as you all know, every Android compatible device supports a shared external storage. Why I call it shared is because other applications can also make use of this particular space, right? That you can use to save the files. So you can use this area in order to save the files onto your devices. The files that are saved to the external storage are the ones that are world readable because it can be read by the user and also modified by the user. So whenever you are storing some critical information, just make sure that you store that critical information into the internal storage. If you are not using and making use of any critical information, then you have to make sure that whichever information you are writing has to be written onto the SD card. Right? So let's cover up a sample for it. First of all, in order to see or say work with the SD card, first of all, firstly you have to check whether the SD card is present onto the device or not. There is no point using uh, SD card when you do not have any SD card installed on the device. So there are various ways of doing it up. If you are using API level 8 or greater, so you will be using a get external cache directory method in order to open a file. However, if you are using API level 7 or lower, the method name will change. Instead, you will be using a get external storage directory to open a file from it. Alright, so these are the various API level differences that we have up. Let's take a look here. So the layout remains the same. The one that we used for internal storage will be using the same layout for external storage as well. So I have a text view here, I have an edit box, I have a phone number, I have an edit box, then I have a button at the bottom which says save information. Very much the same. I go here, take all the object references here, set the content view, take up the edit text name, edit text number. Here you see I have set up this input type from programmatic mode. Prabha, this is for you. If you want to do it from the program itself, you can do it like this, right? Button save, I have a button save, then I have a read the file method, I'll just comment this up for some time. Right? I say button save on click listener, read the value from the file or say from the input boxes, create an end of line separator, get the file information. It is just that I'm getting the input stream or say the SD card content. I get the SD card from this particular method which says environment.get external storage directory. I check whether I can write something onto the file system or not. So if I say I can write something onto the SD card, what am I doing? I'm creating a user info file, right? Giving it as a first argument, I give it the directory. So the directory that I'm making use of is SD card now. I'm creating a file inside the SD card. I hope this is understood to everyone. What exactly a file path information is containing? All right, so I get this information file path. I check or say create a user info file append user info dot txt file to the SD uh, to the uh, I would say the SD cards path. I'll just show it to you by debugging up. Can we also name the folder? That's correct. We can also name the folder uh, Rachat. In this case, if you want to create another folder, you can say create folder and then a forward slash so it will append this up onto a folder, right? So that is how you can create another folder inside it. I create a file writer object. So similar to the one that we did for the input stream or say internal storage, I'm creating a file writer object here. My file writer object is taking as an input argument the user info file, the one that I have created above. Right? I create a, again a buffer writer object which is going to write something onto the file system for me. I do an output out object dot write name plus the end of line separator. 
Similarly, another number plus the end of line separator, right? So this is all that I'm doing here. But I'll be asking you a few questions after this complete example gets done. So here I have the example. Can we write other types of files? Um, what what all types of files? Excel, etc. are the ones that are not supported here. Rachat. That's correct. We can always write the media files. We can always write the media files onto the external storage. Rachat. But in that case, we'll be keep picking up the bitmap and then storing it up as a bitmap onto the SD card. Rachat. Right? So that is how we'll be doing it up. I click on save information. Whenever I click on save information, I'll be getting the file saved up. Now see the change in the path. Where I'll be looking up for it. I'll go on to the SD card, mount, SD card. I have a file user info.txt. Let's pull this out onto the desktop. Let's go to the desktop now. Let's open it up with the word pad. Can everybody find the contents in the file which I had stored onto the file? My name and the contact number, right? So this is holding both the information. Now let's close this up. Go here. And let's read back information from the file system, right? So let's uncomment the read the file method. Similar to the one that I did for internal storage, I'll be doing the exactly the opposite, right? Exactly the opposite in terms of object usage that I did, right? I created a directory, created a file. Instead of the buffered reader, I'll be using a buffered, buffered writer, I'll be using a buffered reader object. Give it the file. Again, the same mechanism, the counter, while I can read the lines from the file, the counter equal to zero, that means I'm reading the first line. If counter equal to one, that means I'm reading the second line. Let me just show you by running this up. Right, it gives me an exception here. Let me check here what exactly could be the problem here. Find out user info.txt is the file. Which file am I using to store here? I think that is all fine here. Let's run this up again and see if there is any problem. We'll see what exactly is the problem. Alright, it gives me a crash again. Let's go on with Logcat and find the problem here. It gives me a null pointer exception here. Where is it giving it to me? It says on create external storage activity dot java 43. Let's find this up. Alright, it is giving me a null pointer at read the file. What is that? Is it not able to find up the file here? Let's find out. It is present here. Alright, let's go here. On create external 43. Alright, it gives me a file. Readers number 93. Let's find out this line here. Alright. I assume that I haven't used the text view name here. Alright, that's the reason here. Alright, I have commented a few lines of code here which was initializing the text view name and text view number. Right? Which were initializing the text view name and text view number. 
of the edit box, uh, text views. So that's what was causing a null pointer here. Now you can see the information being picked up from the file. 